All right, now we have a special video all about reproduction and four color printing, which is how digital art is reproduced in our physical world most commonly, right? It's how books are printed, it's how CD covers are printed, how magazines are printed. It's uh, largely how on-demand t-shirts are printed and products like the ones that we are putting for sale on Redbubble if we like or onto our personal pages. But let's review a little bit from our last two projects. So we just finished our posters. Our posters were combinations of our spot illustration with type design, right? So this was my final spot illustration for assignment seven. I submitted it as a PNG, just like a logo, so that it was transparent and could work on any background, right? But after doing the poster, I added some effects to it. So if we look at this up close, this is the old one. You can see how all the coloring, this is full, spect full spectrum digital soft edge coloring. There are some hard edge elements, but yeah, by and large full spectrum, you'll see multiple colors in every local color, right? But what you'll notice is it definitely looks digital. No one would mistake this for being something else. And for, for a traditional or an analog equivalent, the closest would be like mid 80s spray paint for how kind of gradated and kind of glossy it is, right? That's how digital looks in its natural form. When it is printed, it doesn't usually look like this. Instead, it gets broken up into a process. And so I want you to understand that process so that you can actually have the product you desire. So after I did the poster, I, I made you guys a little bit aware of that process, shared an action with you that replicates that process. Ah. There it is. So then I updated my spot illustration. So after doing the poster, I added what were called uh, color separation dots, halftone dots. And you can see how this does not look like it's airbrush anymore. Instead, it looks a little bit more like, like spray paint with a stenciled dot grid over the top of it, right? Now this is, and then you have the, the type solution that I came up with, which has some texture that's given by a layer style within Photoshop, it has a bevel. You know, there's lots of digital effects still in here. But this was just a stylistic thing I added to my illustration. Right? I want you to know where that stylistic shift comes from, where those dots come from. And you can see, if we look up really close, you can see how when the full color spectrum is represented, as it kind of is here, how they start to make little roses of dots sitting on top of each other. These are called Gaussian roses. These dots come from the inks of the primary colors with black on white paper. And those inks are, you can see them here, are faded because I, I took these dots down to a low opacity, cyan, magenta, and yellow. But here's the important thing. How do you make an image that looks like it has thousands of colors from just three colors and black? Well, the inks aren't 100% opaque, right? So the inks are somewhat transparent, and then the dots overlap each other. That's called offsetting. So they're not directly on top of each other. They are shifted from each other a little bit. And in order to do that, they have to shift in different angles. So if you'll notice, the magenta dots are angled at like this angle. The yellow dots are shifted at that angle. And the cyan dots are shifted right in between at that angle. And then the black dots are shifted at always at 45 degrees. So I want you to learn those, those angles. And I, I'm going to show you how we set that up in Photoshop. And this is also in any kind of graphic communications or printing book that you'll ever find, right? So it is important knowledge to have about making a physical product out of your digital artwork. The last step of your spot illustration that I would like you to do is to try to improve upon it from the one you submitted for assignment seven using some of the effects that you use for the poster and taking it back to a PNG, transparent background like a sticker. And then I would like you to show me how versatile it is by bringing it into your Redbubble site 
and deciding on different products that you think might be interesting. Things like t-shirts, things like patterned, um, look here, let's look at the pillow. Like patterned shirts, pillows, clocks, <laughs> leggings, <laughs> all from one PNG that's kind of well designed, right? And so then what I would like you to do is to make a targeted screen grab. And I know some of you have forgotten how to do this. So it's Command Shift 4. You draw the box around what you want. This is a great way. We just finished our presentations, right? It's a great way to get a, a screen quality image reference of anything that you can see on a screen. And then I'd like you to add that in to your Assignment 7 um, assignment folder, or if you're going to put the whole poster, like some of you are doing, up into Redbubble and play with that, you can put that into assignment eight. So I'm just going to move one example of a product, and you'll see this in past examples too. And it can be a sticker, you know, like this. I like stickers a lot. But it helps me see that you really understand how to design something for versatility. Ah, where did it go? So to find where the newest one uploaded. Oh. I swear I uploaded it. Let's try it again. And the nice thing about screen grabs is their, their screen quality resolution. They're not made for printing, so they should upload very quickly. So, yep, there it is. The fun glitches of PhotoBucket. And then you just add it to your, your streams. This is going to be FA18 Carl, I think, 5. So it shows up right with your other products. Now you might have a lot that you want screen grabs of, right? These are some that I liked. I liked the bag. I like the red t-shirt. I like the sticker, you know, so on and so on. I like the tattoo guy and the oversized print t-shirt. I think I've used the tattoo guy before and I want diversity in my portfolio. So whatever it is, whatever reasons you have. Now, the difference is when you actually order one of these, how are they made, right? How do they actually look? And that is where we get into having to understand halftone screening. So if I take my original PNG, I'm going to show you how I can separate that into halftone dots. And that's exactly what a printer has to do to make an image in the real world. So I'm going to go to assignment seven and I'm going to open up that PNG before I improved it. The one that looks like, like eighties spray paint. And because it's a PNG, just like you put onto Redbubble, it's already all merged together. So this doesn't have vector line work and color underneath it. This is all just pixels, but because it's a PNG, it doesn't have white. It's a shaped file, right? Because PNG support transparency. Now, I am going to play the action that I've already built and is on each of your computers for a cyan, magenta, yellow, and black full run. And just hit play. So you can do this, but, but I'm using this video so you understand what it's doing so that you can play with it for your own work and be more informed and because I'll ask you about these things on the final exam. So what the computer is doing is running through this long list of tasks that are coded within this action. But remember, actions are like VHS tapes, so I don't want you to open it up because I don't want you to accidentally mess up the, the sequence and the types of tasks that are in there, though you have that capability. It would only mess it up for your computer, but still it would be messed up. 
But what it's doing is exactly what a printer would have to do. You can't make a full color image without multiple inks, and you can't have an image with multiple inks without multiple different runs through a printing press. A printing press, even a, an inkjet printer, can only engage one ink at a time, right? So for each ink color, whether it's four inks, like we're gonna see in traditional four color offset printing, or in our printers, which sometimes use up to nine different inks, right? Each ink has to have its own program of where it puts dots. Because an ink can only be one color. And it can't be thinned out and it can't be thickened for darker and lighter versions of that color. Instead, it has to separate itself through smaller dots and larger dots. So that's what um, Photoshop is doing right now. It's taking a little bit longer than I would like to do it. And I'm going to walk you through the steps to create one of these pieces of what's called half-toned film work. So creating all the gradations of one of the ink colors in solid ink. <laughs> and then you layer up at least four of them to get full color. And then those four inks are magenta, cyan, yellow, and black. Okay, it's almost done. We've got the black. We've got the magenta, we've got the yellow, we've got the cyan, and then it's going to combine them all onto one master file in my action. It's very helpful, where they're all layered up. Now, because I use this action as a way of kind of giving a vintage print-aware quality to my illustrations, it is done at kind of a quality that you would see in the 1960s and 70s, which is a pretty large dot screen. So it's something you see in newspapers or in low quality printing. All right, so here we have all the different layers of dots stacking up on top of each other. It's just gonna add in the black on top. In printing, black always goes on top. And let's just go through them individually. So there are differences in different printing presses. But this is my preference. I like to start with the cyan. So my cyan layer is just one solid color. But that solid color is split into lighter and heavier dots. See that? So then from a distance, it looks like you have gradations of blue. But in fact, you only have one blue just broken up into lots of dots. That's at 100% opacity because that's the bottom layer in a digital file. On top of that, we have magenta. Magenta is only at 66% opacity. So this is a very vibrant color, right? And you can see the dots. And then when you overlay that on top of cyan, you'll see the two different angles. So looking at them one at a time, you can see that the, the angle for, for magenta is not quite vertical but it's close to vertical and horizontal. This is about a 15 degree angle. Whereas the dots for, um, for cyan are also not quite horizontal or vertical, and they're shifted a little bit from the magenta so that when you have both at once, here, I'll line them up here. So I'll move the magenta onto the cyan. you can see that the dots don't overlap exactly. There's always a little bit showing at the edge. But where they do overlap, you get a new color because the inks aren't 100% opaque. Now if we add yellow to that, which is at yet another angle, yellow you do at 90 degrees. So the yellow dots, this is kind of easy to remember because it's the lightest ink, it's always printed at 90 degrees or zero degrees, the same thing. Zero degrees here, 90 degrees here. So this does use horizontals and verticals, but you want that on your lightest color because it's the most distracting. And so if I line all of those up, you start to get what are called Gaussian roses. This little, whoops, this little circle of all the dots lining up on top of each other. 
And then the last one,